welcome back to my channel and welcome back to this new video in the series of Victorian Sewing. In this video, I'll be trying to starch my petticoat that I made, this one. And for those of you that have watched my previous video, if you haven't, I will a link down below. You know that I was trying to find a fabric that acts the same way um, as taffeta does. But my skirt was made from cotton, and as you can see, it is not stiff at all. Um, so I found that if you starch a cotton petticoat, you can actually give it that same quality and paper-like feeling. So in this video, I will show you how I try to starch it um, using something very special. Ta-da! So this is a package of antique. I'm not quite sure if it's antique. Um, it's starch. This brand was already around in like starting 1858. Um, this company made rice based starches for clothing and it was actually a very big company and I would like to think that some of my ancestors may have used stuff like this as well. Um, so I thought it'd be interesting to actually try and starch my skirt with something that was already around in the time when the pattern for this skirt was made. So that's going to be fun. Um, I'm actually quite scared to open the package because it's old so I have to maybe just very carefully open just a corner somewhere so I can keep this pretty box and put it somewhere in my room. Okay but starch is meant to be used. Next up how am I going to do this? So I checked the package and it's it's not the greatest help because it says used cold, dissolve in cold water, steep the dried linen in it and iron seam while still wet. Okay. Used warm, dissolve in a little cold water and add sufficient boiling water. Do not, however, let it boil. What is a little cold water and what is sufficient boiling water? package you are of no help um so yeah once again they're using common knowledge that is not so much common knowledge anymore same as what i've encountered in some of my patterns where they say do it the usual way what is the usual way tell me well luckily the internet came to the rescue and i actually found an old recipe from someone using starch like this and I will include the ratios down below so you can actually go try it out for yourself. And it reads as follows. For this recipe, use 100 milliliters of cold water, add 3 quarters of a liter of boiling water, and stir until dissolved. Now so far, sounds pretty easy. Add cold water until the desired ratio is achieved. So it gives 4 ratios for 4 amounts like four levels of stiffness so you kind of have to guess a bit yourself which one you will need it has a ratio for light normal firm and extra firm i think i will go for firm because i really want my skirts to stand out um and that one says one full tablespoon in one liter of water so i will be doing that um it also says after washing your garment dip your garments in the starch solution as soon as the garment is towel dry, iron, or wet before ironing. So there are two ways to do this. You can either let your garment dry completely and then make it wet again, which sounds very inefficient to me, or wait until it's towel dry. Now, I'm not quite sure what it means towel dry to your garment. Sorry, as long as it's not dripping wet. I did see online that some people um, rolled up their garments into towels and then put them in fridges and things. Um, I'm just going to do the ye old fashioned way and just put it on my line outside and just keep checking until it has reached the desired dryness. Is that a thing? Yeah. Um, because outside the weather is lovely so I'm going to use the nice weather to the fullest. Well, it sounds pretty simple so let's give it a try. First I'm going to uh, boil my water and then open this package as careful as I can um and then uh, start starching start starting yeah start starching <laughs> so before I starch the skirt 
I will show you what it looks like, how it rolls, and then I'll show you again once I'm done. Okay, so I have written down a recipe. I need to start with one tablespoon of the starch, which actually means I'm going to carefully open my antique package. So let's let's do that. Well, I got one side open, so I can actually use this to get to the crystal. So I'll need one tablespoon. Okay, and then 100 milliliters cold water. Let's get that. Got that. Adding it. Why does this feel so scary? Ooh, it's already doing something. Wait, let me show you. Look. Slowly dissolving. Now I need to add 750 milliliters of boiling water. So let's measure that out. And then that needs to be mixed with that, but I'll do it the other way around because this is bigger. Oh, look at that. It even smells old. It reminds me of like the shops where you can, like the antique shops, and then when you're walking around in the, the part where they have all the textiles that are old. Oh, it smells so good. Stir this until it is all dissolved. Okay, so now that pretty much all of the crystals are dissolved, I will need to add a liter of cold water. So this can go into the big tub. Okay, and then stir that again. I hope it's going to be enough for my petticoat. I'm sure. It'll have to be. Okay. And then it's time for the dipping. Here it goes. Wait, let me tie these ties so they won't. a nice lukewarm and also in my last video you could see I was using the the blue disappearing pen so this Duncan also helps to make it disappear okay so everything is all soaking wet and now it is time to go hang it up on the line so let's go to the garden Okay, so here we have my bucket with my skirt and my clothing line. So first I will wring her out. I read somewhere that it depends on how sticky you want your skirt to be. That's how much you need to wring it out. But because this recipe already takes some firmness in account, I'm sure I just need to make sure it's not dripping. I have to say, this recipe was perfect because I still have a little bit left, but it's the right amount for this skirt. So, this is going to dry for a few hours and when it has reached a towel dry condition, whatever that may be, um, I will go and iron it. So for now, it's just waiting. So 
the petticoat is still a little bit wet but it's not like crazy wet just like how I would imagine towel dry to be. So now it's time to iron this whole thing, which is probably gonna take me a while because it's a lot of fabric. And then I can try it on and see the difference uh, the starching has made. So yeah, let's go iron for like half an hour. I'll, I'll see you in a bit. Well, that was my petticoat in all its starched glory. I am very happy with how this recipe turned out. I'm also very, very impressed with how well that old starch worked. I was, I was kind of skeptic, to be honest. I was like, this is old, it's not gonna work. But hey, it worked, it did a really good job. One lesson I did learn is, you remember the comment I made about the ringing out? So actually that's a thing. Don't ring it out too much because the lower, like, the lower flounce is way stiffer than the upper flounce. And the reason for that is, is when I pressed the skirt after starching, the lower flounce was still a bit more damp than the other layer and you can definitely tell the difference so i might just go starch it again and leave it off uh starching it next time so when i press it that time everything's going to be the same level of stiffness that's how you call it oh well i am so grateful for everyone that's been following my journey so far like slowly but surely this is turning into an 1890s outfit we already have all most of the under layers I will definitely need another underskirt and I will need the upper skirt and then I will need a bodice or a blouse because we already have the jacket because I started backwards. Wait, let me let me go grab it. This is still my favorite. Yep. Still love it. Still love these sleeves. And now the skirt joins in too. Um, this pattern is also available in my Etsy shop, so um, I go check that out. But yeah, we're we're getting there. So for my next video, I have to think about what I'm going to do first. There is still plenty to do before this outfit's done. But if you don't want to miss all that, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be one of the first people that hears it when my new video is coming up. And I am going to uh, twirl around the house and uh, see you guys all next time. <laughs>